Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazhar, and today is the 16th of May 2022. Right now, I am with the 11th Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is Physics 5054. This is Cambridge O Levels Physics, and we are studying a very important document, and that document is uh, Learner Guide. And this is the third video on this. Uh, we have done the part A, part B, and now we are on the part C. And we are discussing a very important document, learner guide. And normally what happens when our students are ready for exam, this is the last document which they, they study and they make sure that they have learned everything. So uh, now we are going to start this part and here we go. So we are talking about this learner guide and here we have uh, we are right now on the topic number seven and in the topic seven he says uh, the, the topic is pressure so define the term pressure in terms of the force and the area so you should know that the formula for the pressure is force divided by area or the weight divided by area area means the contact area of that body with the body which is below that thing. So if you know that formula for pressure is equal to force divided by area, so put a tick here. And you should know this formula, do calculations using the equation pressure is equal to force divided by area. And also remember the, for the, the unit for the pressure is force divided by area means Newton per meter square. It can also be Newton per centimeter square. Newton per meter square is also called Pascal. So the unit of the pressure is Pascal, which is equal to Newton per meter square. The formula for the pressure is pressure is equal to force divided by area. If you know the force and area, you can find the pressure. If you know the pressure and the area, you can find the force. If you know the pressure and the force, you can find the contact area. Explain how pressure varies with the force and area in a range of everyday examples. Uh, for example, uh, you remember that thing, if the contact area will decrease, the pressure will of the same thing will increase. For example, especially we talk about the knife. If the, if the blade of the knife is sharp, the contact area will decrease. For with the same force, you can create larger pressure. Uh, you must have seen in your book the 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 diagram the figures which we have heel heel of a shoe when you have heel the contact area is smaller so the pressure increases on the ground so for example if a car is on uh, if something is on four wheels the pressure will be less if the there are two wheels the pressure will be more so the contact area if decreases the pressure will automatically increase so uh, the pressure changes describe how the height of a liquid column may be used to measure the uh, atmospheric pressure. So they are talking about the barometer. And you know, barometer is basically a tube which is one meter long and it is filled with the mercury. And then we invert that tube and we put it in a tray full of mercury. And obviously due to the weight of the mercury in that column, the level of the mercury drops in the in that uh, tube but you see the due to the atmospheric because the atmospheric pressure will be trying to push the mercury on the tray back into the tube but the weight of the mercury in the tube will trying to bring the mercury out of the tube so when there is a balance between them the level of the mercury drops and it stops at a certain height so the the level of the mercury in the tube from the level of the mercury in the tray that height is known as that height actually corresponds with the atmospheric pressure so this is very important thing you should know this and explain in words how the pressure beneath a liquid surface changes with the depth and density of the liquid in the simple average examples so if you are inside the liquid body there will be pressure due to the liquid on you so that pressure depends upon the depth of the liquid above that point. The depth of the liquid above that point, it depends upon that. More the depth of the liquid above that point, the more will be the pressure of the liquid. And it also depends upon the density of the liquid. 
if the density of the liquid is more, uh, the pressure will be more. If the density is less, the pressure will be less. It also depends upon the gravitational field strength, the G value, and more the G value, the more will be the pressure of the liquid. The pressure of the liquid is given by the formula rho G H, or here it is written H rho G, here H means the depth of the liquid above the point where you are trying to measure the, the pressure of the liquid. That means the depth and that is normally taken in meters and the rho means the density of the liquid and G means the gravitational field strength of the, at that location. So normally its value is 10 Newton per kg. <clears throat> so this formula is very famous. We have to find out the pressure of the liquid. Many, many numericals come in papers. Then we, if you have done numericals on this formula and you know the use of this formula, put a tick here. Describe how a manometer is used to measure the pressure difference. You see, manometer is used to find the pressure difference between the atmosphere and a, a gas, a gas supply or a gas cylinder. Okay, in the manometer, what happens is a U-shaped tube, and on both the on the both the limbs, we call it limbs, the U-shaped tube. In both the limbs, we have, for example, mercury, you might have water or you might have some other liquid. And if the level of the mercury in both the limbs is same, same, it means uh, that the, the pressure on both the sides is same. And if on one side you have atmosphere and on the other side you have a gas cylinder, and you find that the, 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 there is a difference of level in the mercury, of the mercury in both the limbs, then it means that the pressure is different. The atmospheric pressure is different and the gas cylinder has a different pressure. So if the limb which is on the gas cylinder side, here the, the level is low and on the atmospheric side limb, the, the level of the mercury is higher. It means that the, the gas cylinder has higher pressure as compared to the atmosphere. And whatever, whatever is the difference between the heights of, the, of, of both the levels of the mercury, that that much pressure of that gas is more than the atmosphere. And for example, if the, if, the, if the level of the mercury in the limb, which is on the cylinder side is higher and the level of the mercury in the atmospheric side is lower, then whatever is the difference between their levels, uh, the gas supply pressure is that much less than the atmospheric pressure. So if you have studied the manometer and you have done few questions on it, so put a tick here. Describe and explain in the transmission of the pressure in the hydraulic system. You see in the hydraulic system, um, we fill the hydraulic system normally with oil. And if you create pressure uh, by, uh, by pushing a piston on one side, uh, the same pressure is transmitted to the other side of the of the hydraulic system. So in the hydraulic system, normally you have a pipe and on one side, the, we have a cylinder and on the, on the other side, we also have a cylinder. On the cylinder, one cylinder is smaller, the other cylinder is larger. Normally the cylinder, which is smaller, there we, we apply force. And due to that force, the pressure is created and that pipe is filled with the oil and the pressure is created in that piston by pushing, when you push that piston, obviously the force is transmitted to the oil and that oil transfer, whatever the pressure is created, it transfers the pressure to the, to the larger cylinder and to the larger piston. So the, this is the property of the oil that uh, the, whatever is the pressure created in one end, this is the property of the hydraulic, that whatever is the pressure created at one point, same pressure is transmitted to the other point. This is also called Pascal's principle. Pascal's principle is that the, the pressure in the hydraulic system created at one point, same pressure is transmitted to the other point. Describe the working of the hydraulic press, okay? So the hydraulic press, there are two, three things very important. You see uh, the pressure created in the, in the smaller cylinder is equal to the pressure created 
in the larger cylinder. So the pressure created in the smaller cylinder is force divided by area. The pressure created in the larger cylinder is also force divided by its area. And both the pressures are equal. So from there you can do the calculation. Another very important thing is that law of conservation of energy is uh, law of conservation of energy is is obeyed in this system. And so the work done in the in the smaller piston is equal to the work done in the larger piston. The force which is applied on the smaller piston is smaller, but the force which is created in the larger piston is very large. So, but the distance traveled by the smaller piston is large, but the distance traveled by the larger piston is always small. So the work done on the small piston is equal to the work done on the large piston. So the force multiplied the distance moved by the uh, piston in the smaller is equal to the force multiplied the distance moved in the larger piston. So that is also a bit. And another very important thing is that when you push the piston in the smaller piston, uh, when you push the smaller piston, oil is displaced and when the oil is displaced from the smaller cylinder that displaced oil goes into the larger piston so when it goes into the larger piston you see in the smaller piston because the cross sectional area is smaller so that the length of that uh, oil is larger but when the same volume of the oil goes into the larger piston in the larger piston, the cross-sectional area is larger. For same displaced volume of the oil, the length of that, uh, uh, that oil in the larger piston becomes smaller. The reason is cross-sectional area is larger. So, but, but you know, it's, it's, the volume is still the same, but because the cross-sectional area in the larger piston is larger, that's why it, there the, the length of the oil will be smaller. How the hydraulic press works, how the hydraulic brake works. In the hydraulic brakes, you know, um, we have smaller pistons and we apply brake with the brake paddle. We create pressure in that smaller piston and the oil is displaced and the oil transmits the pressure to, and there is a large piston and we have the, the brake shoes. So they move outward and the rub, rub against the disc of the tires and the brakes are applied. So the hydraulic brakes work like this. Another, uh, describe how changing the pressure applied to a gas at a constant temperature causes a change in the volume. Okay, so uh, we are talking about the gas and gas is inside a cylinder, okay? And inside a cylinder and here, the temperature is constant. So we are talking about a gas which is trapped in a cylinder and that cylinder is fitted with a movable piston and its, and its temperature is not changing. The temperature is constant. Another very important thing which is not changing is the mass of the gas. The number of molecules of the gas which are inside the cylinder, they are not changing. So what happens when you when you will decrease the volume, the pressure of the gas will increase. And if you increase the volume of the gas by moving the piston out of the cylinder, the pressure of the gas will decrease. And this is a very famous question. It comes in papers that um, what, ha what happened? Well, why, when you increase the pressure, so when you increase the volume, why the pressure decreases? Or when you decrease the volume, why the pressure increases? You see, it's a very important description and you should be able to write this. Uh, when you keep the temperature constant and the volume of the gas is decreased by moving the piston into the cylinder. So what happens, two, three things are important. The number of molecules per unit volume increases. the collision frequency of the gas molecules with the walls of the cylinder increases. 
so on per unit area now more number of molecules are colliding so that's why a larger force is exerted on the walls of the container and that's why the pressure increases another very important description is that when the volume of the gas is increased and the temperature is kept constant why the pressure will decrease when you increase the volume and you keep the temperature constant you see the number of the molecules of the gas per unit volume will decrease the collision frequency of the gas molecules with the walls of the container will decrease and due to this what will happen less number of molecules will be colliding per unit area so less force is exerted on per unit area in per unit time so the pressure of the gas decreases it's a very important description if you know that put a tick here and then this is a very famous formula p1 v1 equals to p2 v2 if you keep the temperature constant of a gas inside a cylinder if you or inside a balloon you can say or inside a bubble if you keep the temperature constant the pressure and the volume they are inversely proportional to each other and when they are inversely proportional to each other the product of pressure and the volume remains constant it means that if you will increase the volume the pressure will decrease if you decrease the volume the pressure will increase so they are inversely proportional to each other if you draw the graph of the pressure and the volume the graph will be a decreasing curve between the pressure and the volume and this is a very famous formula many many numericals come in paper you have to um, you should be able to understand that if the pressure one is known the volume one is known pressure two is known and volume two is constant you can do this you remember that formula a bubble at the bottom of the lake has this much volume and when it will come to the surface how much will be its volume if you have done the questions on this p1 v1 equals to p2 v2 the product of the pressure and the volume remains constant if the temperature of the gas is constant a very famous formula okay so uh, that was the pressure and uh, now um uh, for the pressure one thing if you will make the volume of the gas and temperature is constant if you make the volume double the pressure will become half if you make the volume four times the pressure will become 1 by 4 if you will make the volume 1 by 2 the pressure will double if you make the volume of the gas 1 by 3 the pressure will become three times so that's very important okay so now we have the next uh, theme that is the energy sources and the transfer of the energy so there are different sources of energy list the different forms of energy uh, you should know the different forms of energy the most important are for example you have the chemical potential energy which is in the food which is in the in the fuels and which is in the human body so that's the chemical potential energy and then we have the gravitational potential energy which is due to the position of a body in a gravitational field and then we have the kinetic energy and, and the kinetic energy you know is due to the motion of the body then we have uh, thermal energy we have wind energy we have sound energy we have light energy we have nuclear energy so these are the different forms of energy you should know them if you know them put a tick here geothermal energy give examples in which uh, from which in which each form occurs so you should know this state the principle of the conservation of energy the principle of conservation of energy is that the energy can neither be created nor can be destroyed in an isolated system the total energy of the system remains constant but the energy can be changed from one form to another form but the total energy of the system remains constant that's the that's the principle of conservation of energy 
and then he says apply the principle of conservation of energy from one form to another whenever this happens you have to you have to uh, identify that what is initial form of the energy and what are the intermediate forms of energy in which the energy initial energy converted and then what is the final form of the energy and at then you have to mention that the total energy of the system will remain constant you cannot create energy you cannot destroy energy uh for example you must have heard that when something from the top comes down at the top it has gravitational potential energy as it comes down its gravitational potential converts energy converts into the kinetic energy and when you reach the bottom of that fall all of your gravitational potential energy which was here when it is about to touch the ground all of that gravitational potential energy has converted into the kinetic energy so you see the, the but the total energy of the system remains constant and if the air resistance is present there then the chemical the gravitational potential energy will convert into kinetic plus the thermal because you are overcoming the air resistance you should remember this formula very important formula that the kinetic energy is equals to 1 by 2 mv square where m is the mass and that is measured in kg b is the velocity or speed that's in meter per second and energy is measured in joules you should know the formula for the gravitational potential energy the gravitational potential energy the formula is mgh or sometimes we use the formula weight into height w into h and do calculations using these equations okay so in 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 many numericals we have seen that uh, the loss and a very important relationship is when something comes down for example it's have a fall so uh, at the top it will have its gravitational potential energy but when it is about to touch the ground that kinetic that gravitational potential energy will convert into the kinetic energy so sometimes we have to uh, they ask us how much is the kinetic energy when it is about to touch the ground and that will be if there is no air resistance then that kinetic energy will be equals to the potential gravitational potential energy which it has at the top the reason is because you see uh, the gravitational potential energy converted into the kinetic energy we use a very famous equation we say loss in the gravitational potential energy is equals to gain in the kinetic energy for example if i am standing on a hill and from the top of the hill uh, i am on a bicycle and i come to the bottom of the hill and so the question is how much is my kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill so whatever was my put gravitational potential energy on the top of the hill that will be converted into the kinetic energy so the kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill will be equals to the gravitational potential energy at the top of the hill if we ignore all the resistive forces so you should know these things and it's a very very famous and important thing okay then we have the major sources of energy list renewable and non renewable energy sources you know this definition is very important for example um they ask you what is the renewable energy source define it and what is the non renewable energy source both these definitions come in paper renewable energy source is energy source uh source sorry uh, which can be uh, replenished which can be reproduced which can be after uh, you have exhausted that source we can recreate that source but non renewable energy sources are those which cannot be replenished which cannot be recreated which once exhausted will be extinct uh, they will be totally vanished so you cannot reproduce them so those are non renewable energy sources describe the energy conversion taking place then using the following energy sources chemical energy and, and fuel energy regrouping of the atoms so you know whenever the we talk about the fuel and the food they have the chemical potential energy so when the atoms the bonds are broken and then this energy is released hydroelectric generation emphasizing the mechanical energies involved in the hydroelectric in the hydro hydroelectric 
generation, you see the water is collected on a, on a certain height. And from there, uh, that collected water is let fall down like 200 meters down. And when it fall down through a tunnel, you see uh, its gravitational potential energy converts into kinetic energy. And with the, that falling water, we run our turbines. And so that gravitational potential energy converts into the kinetic energy and that runs the, the turbines. And those turbines then run the generator. And then finally, the electricity is produced. So your gravitational potential energy converted into the kinetic energy and that was converted into the electric energy. So one very important thing about the hydraulic system, hydro, hydroelectric system generation, they ask what is the advantage of hydroelectric system? So there are no uh, greenhouse gases uh, produced and it's a very, but it's, it's very expensive at the start. The initial cost is very high, but then it's free. Uh, solar energy, nuclei of atom of the sun, solar energy, uh, the energy is coming from the sun. And uh, nuclear energy, we break the nucleus and we get energy, geothermal energy, the energy which is inside the, inside the earth, that is geothermal. Wind energy, you know, wind turbines, we use them. Uh, Explain how the nuclear fusion release energy is a very famous word and very famous. In the nuclear fusion, you see two smaller nuclei come close to each other, they fuse into each other and they make a larger nucleus. And when this happens, an uh, enormous amount of energy is also given out. For example, hydrogen, hydrogen atoms, they come close to each other and the, their nucleus, they fuse into each other and they make the nucleus of, a, of, a, of, of helium. So that is called nuclear fusion, that, that this process is taking place on sun and this process is taking place on other stars and that is the source of energy in them. Then we have nuclear fusion. In the nuclear fusion, you see um, the nucleus is bombarded with the neutrons and a large nucleus is bombarded with the neutrons and when the nucleus hits the neutrons, you see the, 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 the atom splits into two smaller nuclei this is called the nuclear fusion, and more neutrons are produced and they break the, and they do the fusion of the other large nucleus there. And this is nuclear fusion, and this is taking place in nuclear reactors and we can control this system. Discover the generation of electricity and draw block diagram of the process from fuel input to the electricity output. You see in this, you see uh, in the, in the nuclear reactor where the nuclear fusion is taking place, uh, we have the nuclear energy when this nuclear fusion takes place, nuclear energy is produced, is there. And when it is released, it, it, it gives out a lot of thermal energy. That thermal energy used to heat up the, what we call that, um, we have a liquid and that absorbs that energy and that liquid becomes hot. And then that liquid is uh, used to boil the water in the boilers and the steam is produced and that steam when comes out of the boilers, that steam is at very high speed at very high pressure. That speed, that steam is used to run the, turn the turbines of the generators and the electricity is produced. If you, you have studied this, if you have seen that block diagram, then put a tick here, okay. So uh, the, the last one is that discuss the environmental issues associated with the power generation. You see, whenever you, you do the power generation, if you, if you are using the fossil fuels and the fossil fuels, you know, uh, their problem is that they produce a lot of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and sulfur trioxide, sulfur dioxide. Which, are, which produces acid rain, which produces greenhouse gases, which causes the greenhouse effect and, and in the global warming. So uh, the work done, uh, work done, you remember this, the one, one very simple formula for the work done is that the force multiply the distance which the body moves in the direction of the force. 
if you apply the force and the body do not move in the direction of the force the work done will be zero the work is force multiplied distance but what distance distance moved in the direction of the force if you apply force and the body do not move the work done is zero in our syllabus the work done has also other formulas for example work done can be change in the gravitational potential energy the work done can be also equals to the change in the kinetic energy and the work done can also be equals to the force multiplied distance moved in the direction of the force the force is in newtons the distance is in meters and the unit of the work is joules so i hope you understand if the if you apply the force and the body moves and the direction of the force and the distance moved by the body they are perpendicular to each other means that angle between them is 90 degree then the work done is zero remember that thing okay one very important thing is the efficiency the efficiency is remember this thing that there are two formula for the efficiency one is the useful the word useful is very important he said useful energy output divided by total energy input multiply 100 okay another formula for the efficiency is useful output power divided by the total input power multiply 100 so remember these two formula if you remember these two formula and you have done questions on it you see uh, you see uh, another kind of wording is he this use the word uh, um, input energy wasted energy and useful energy so then the formula will be useful energy divided by the input energy multiply 100 and you know the useful energy is input energy minus the wasted energy okay the efficiency don't have any unit because it's a ratio discuss the efficiency of energy conversion in common uses particularly those giving electric outputs so you have to many times calculate the efficiency so you should be able to understand what is the input energy what is the output energy and useful output energy divided by input energy multiply 100 sometimes you go with the powers so useful output power divided by the input power multiply 100 and that will give you the uh, you know uh, the efficiency okay so discuss the usefulness of energy output from a number of energy conversions okay so another very important question uh, uh, you know the heat produced by an electric heater that is also very important uh because in the energy chapter we use that a lot the the energy which is produced by the electric heater is its formula is ivt energy produced by an electric heater is ivt this will come in the next uh, chapters but i'm just telling you the energy produced by an electric heater the formula is ivt okay so if you know that then is good okay so the power formula for the power is power is basically the rate of the transfer of energy remember these words the rate of the transfer of energy the power is work divided by time the power is uh change in energy divided by time rate of doing work that is called power the unit of the power is watt w a t t watt and uh, if you have done questions on the power just note it down put a tick here and the electric power you know the electric power is iv the formula for the electric power is iv a very famous formula and that is measured in watts so uh i think enough for this uh, video um my dear students um, today in this video we have covered from the learners guide 
from the topic seven, which was about pressure. And then we have done topic number eight, which is energy. I have tried to uh, discuss with you a few of the topics. And this is the part C of this series. Okay, so the next topic I will do in my next uh, series. So keep watching. I, my next video will start from the transfer of the thermal energy. So uh, this is enough for today's video. So, uh, so everyone, thank you very much uh, for taking out time and uh, watching this video. This is, we are discussing the learner guide and this is the C part. We have already done A part, B part, and this is the C part. Soon I will be back with you with the D part of the learner's guide. And till then, thank you very much. If you like this video, share the link of this video onto your Facebook and onto your Instagram and onto your Twitter accounts. Also share the link of this video with your friends and also share the link of this video with your junior students. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. God bless you all.